Okay, uh, we continue our session. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Tatiana Suslina from St. Petersburg. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sasha and Dasha for their great work in organizing this conference. And uh, I would like uh, to say some words uh, in Russian. Ну, для меня большая честь выступать на конференции, посвященной столетию Ольги Александровны Ладыжинской. И я коснусь только одной э, сферы деятельности Ольги Александровны, педагогической. Э, как представитель физического факультета, физфака Ленинградского, ныне Санкт-Петербургского государственного университета, э, Ольга Александровна э, сыграла исключительную роль в становлении и развитии нашей кафедры, кафедры высшей математики и математической физики физфака. Кафедра была сначала основана Владимиром Ивановичем Смирновым как образовательная математическая кафедра, и именно благодаря инициативе и усилиям Ольги Александровны кафедра стала выпускающей и стала готовить специалистов в области математической физики. И многие ученики Ольги Александровны были выпускниками нашей кафедры. В первом выпуске были Нина Николаевна Уральцева и Людвиг Дмитриевич Фадеев. И вскоре выпускником был и учеником Ольги Александровны присутствующий здесь Всеволод Алексеевич Солонников. И я хочу показать фотографию кафедры. Точный год я не знаю, думаю, что 70-е годы. Владимир Федорович Лазуткин, Михаил Соломонович Бирман, Ольга Александровна Ладыжинская, Василий Михайлович Бабич, Владимир Сергеевич Булдырев. Во втором ряду Михаил Дмитриевич Фадеев, так, Владимир Борисович Матвеев. Станислав Петрович Меркурьев, который впоследствии был ректором нашего университета, Никита Владимирович Свернов, сын Владимира Ивановича, Иван Анатольевич Молотков, Владимир Савельевич Буслаев, Александр Сергеевич Благовещенский, Сергей Юрьевич Славянов, Владимир Лукич Олейник. Вот такая была кафедра. И Ольга Александровна много лет оставалась профессором кафедры, и мне повезло, что я изучала ну, вот, уравнения матфизики и вообще теорию уравнений в частных производных, слушая ее замечательные лекции. Теперь к теме доклада. Screen. Uh -huh. okay. uh, готово, Саш? Нет, нет, Давайте титульную первую страничку. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to talk about homogenization of hyperbolic equations with periodic coefficients. Uh, the talk is based on our joint works uh, with uh, Mark Darwin, uh, who is participant of this uh, conference. Uh, let us start uh, with the statement of the problem. Uh, first, we introduce some notation. Uh, by gamma, we denote a lattice in AD. Omega is the cell of this lattice. Uh, gamma tilde is the dual lattice, uh, and omega tilde is the central uh, Brillouin zone of the dual lattice. Uh, for instance, if gamma is the cubic lattice ZD, then omega is the unit cube, gamma tilde is cubic lattice 2 pi Z to the power D, omega tilde is this cube, minus pi pi to the power D. Uh, epsilon is a small positive parameter, and we agree to use such notation uh, for any uh, gamma periodic function f, f with index epsilon of x is equal to f of x 
uh, over epsilon. Uh, for small epsilon, such function oscillates rapidly, and the uh, homogenization theory studies differential equations with uh, such coefficients. Uh, now we introduce our main object. It is a matrix uh, elliptic second order differential operator uh, acting um, in L2 RDCN on vector functions. Um, this operator is given in a factorized form. Uh, here, the matrix in the middle is of size M by M. Uh, B of D is a differential operator, first order differential operator of size M by N, the adjoint is N by M. Uh, we assume that M is greater or equal than N. Um, next, uh, we assume that G of X uh, is gamma periodic matrix valued function. Uh, in general, it is Hermitian matrix with complex entries. Uh, bounded and uniformly positive definite. Uh, the operator B of D uh, is the first order differential operator of such form. Here DJ are constant uh, matrices, also with complex entries of size M by N. Uh, we consider the symbol B of Xi and assume uh, that the symbol has maximal rank. Uh, the precise definition of the operator A epsilon is given in terms of this quadratic form defined on the Sobolev space H1. Under our assumptions, uh, we have such two-sided estimates for this quadratic form, uh, and it means that the operator is strongly elliptic. Uh, the simplest example is the acoustics operator, its usual divergent type scalar elliptic operator. In this example, n equals 1, m equals d, and b of d is d. Uh, d is minus i gradient. Uh, the operator of elasticity uh, also admits such a factorization. For elasticity, of course, the operator is matrix operator. Uh, now, what is our problem? Our problem is to study the behavior of the following operator valued functions of A epsilon, this cosine of square root of the operator multiplied by the parameter tau, tau is time, real valued parameter. And uh, this sign uh, multiplied by A epsilon to minus one half. Um, we will formulate the results in the operator terms, uh, but of course we can apply them uh, to study the solution uh, of the following Cauchy problem uh, for this hyperbolic equation. It's well known that uh, the solution admits such a representation. Uh, we show that in some sense uh, this operator functions of A epsilon uh, behave as the same operator functions uh, of the operator A naught. Uh, A naught is called the effective operator uh, and it is also given in such factorized form, but uh, G naught is now a constant positive definite matrix called the effective matrix. Now we recall the definition of the effective matrix. Uh, the definition is non-trivial. Uh, first, we have to consider the so-called cell problem. Uh, let lambda uh, be the matrix valued uh, periodic solution of this elliptic equation. So we consider this equation on the cell omega with periodic boundary conditions. And uh, the solution is fixed by this condition. The mean value of lambda is zero. Uh, next, uh, we define G tilde of X in terms of lambda by this formula, and the mean value of G tilde is the effective matrix G naught. And it turns out uh, that uh, G naught is always positive definite. Now it's convenient to give a short survey of the known results. Uh, in 2001, in our joint paper with Mikhail Salamonovich Birman, um, 
a new operator theoretic approach uh, to homogenization problem was suggested. And it was shown that the resolvent of a epsilon converges to the resolvent of a naught in the L2 operator norm. Uh, the norm of the difference satisfies sharp order estimate one, estimate of order epsilon. Uh, later, a more accurate approximation for this resolvent uh, was obtained. Uh, here, uh, K is uh, the so-called character. Uh, and uh, now the error is of order epsilon squared. And uh, also approximation for this resolvent uh, in the energy norm was obtained. The norm of operators acting from L2 to the Sobolev space H1. Uh, K1 is also called character, uh, but the characters are uh, different. And estimate three is of order epsilon. Now we define these characters. Uh, first, K1. Uh, K1 is a more or less standard uh, character used in a homogenization theory. Uh, it involves the resolvent of A0, uh, the differential operator B of D, uh, multiplication by rapidly oscillating matrix lambda epsilon, and also it involves uh, the auxiliary smoothing operator pi epsilon, if defined by this um, formula. Uh, here uh, you had is the Fourier image of U, and it looks like we take the inverse Fourier transform, uh, but we integrate here not over the whole space, uh, but over this uh, large set omega tilde divided by epsilon. The operator is smoothing. Uh, the character K in estimate two has a more complicated structure. It is the sum of three terms, uh, this K1, the joint of K1, uh, and um, the term K3, which does not depend on epsilon. Now I will not describe this K3. Um, sometimes it is equal to zero, for example, for the acoustic separator. But for matrix separator, usually it is not zero. Um, similar results were obtained uh, for the parabolic semigroup. Estimate four is the principal term of approximation, uh, Lisa Vasilyevska um, obtained approximation for the semi-group with character uh, and error of order epsilon squared, and also approximation in the energy norm was obtained. Uh, such estimates are called uh, operator error estimates in homogenization theory. Uh, a different approach to operator error estimates, uh, the so-called shift method, was suggested by Vasily Vasilievich Zhikov in 2005 and um, developed um, in a big series of papers, uh, of joint papers uh, by, um, by Vasily Zhikov and uh, Svetlana Evgenievna Pastukova, who is here. Um, they, in the 2016, they published a big survey in Russian mathematical surveys. Uh, now let us discuss um, the situation with the homogenization of non-stationary equations, Schrodinger type, and hyperbolic equations. And the situation is different from the elliptic and parabolic cases. Uh, our last uh, joint paper with Mikhail Slamonovich Birman in 2008 uh, was devoted to such uh, problems. Um, we studied uh, this expanding shell for a epsilon and this cosine. Uh, and it turns out that it is impossible um, to obtain estimates uh, in the L2 operator norm as for elliptic and parabolic cases. Uh, the type of the norm must be changed. Uh, for exponential, um, here we have the norm from H3 to L2. Uh, then we have sharp order estimate. Um, uh, but on the right, uh, we have this uh, factor, one plus modulus of tau, uh, which grows uh, for large tau. And a similar result was obtained for cosine. Here, the norm is from H2 to L2. 
uh, the second operator, this uh, sign multiplied by a epsilon to minus one half, uh, was studied by Yulia Mishkova. Um, he obtained a similar result. Here, the norm is from H1 to L2. And also, sh she managed uh, to prove um, approximation for this operator in the energy norm with corrector. Uh, note that um, there are no such results for exponential or for cosine. Uh, in fact, um, this operator involves um, the negative power of a epsilon, and this uh, helps to obtain such approximation. Uh, in the recent works, uh, several works by myself, by Mark Darodny and our joint works, uh, it was confirmed that in the general case, uh, all the results are sharp. Uh, they are sharp with respect to the norm type. Uh, it means that, for example, here, um, we cannot replace H3 uh, by Hs uh, with some S less than three. And also, the results are sharp with respect to time. Uh, it means uh, that here on the right, we cannot replace this growing factor uh, by some power uh, of one plus modulus of two, the power less than one in the general case, in the general case. However, under some additional assumptions, I will describe these assumptions later. Uh, the results have been improved in both senses. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, quite recently, uh, I studied uh, the question about uh, approximations with characters for the exponential. Uh, and such approximations uh, were obtained uh, not for the, this exponential itself, but for this uh, product this exponential multiplied by identity plus epsilon lambda epsilon b of d by epsilon. Um, well, uh, now, what is our problem? What do we want to study? We ask the following questions. Is it possible uh, to approximate these separators, the cosine and this separator, uh, in uh, the HSL2 norm uh, with error of order epsilon squared, taking some characters into account. Uh, and uh, the second question, is it possible uh, to assign the operator cosine in the uh, energy norm from HS to H1 with the appropriate S and error of order epsilon? Uh, for the second operator, uh, um, the answer is positive, but is it possible for cosine? Uh, so we have obtained the required approximation uh, for this operator. And again, we have obtained the required approximations not for this cosine itself, but for this product. Uh, Again, we formulate the results in the operator terms, but we can apply them um, uh, to study the solution of the following Cauchy problem, uh, this hyperbolic equation. And the first initial condition is uh, taken uh, from a special class. This initial condition is uh, given by some function phi plus epsilon lambda epsilon b of d by epsilon phi. The second um, initial condition is given by some function psi. Uh, now, before we uh, formulate the results, uh, we need to discuss uh, the method a little bit uh, because we have to um, introduce uh, necessary objects that will be used in the theorems. Uh, we apply the operator theoretic approach, which is based um, on the scaling transformation, the Flake block theory, and the analytic perturbation theory. The first step is the scaling transformation. Uh, the study of these operator functions uh, for A epsilon uh, 
uh, by the scaling transformation is reduced uh, to the study of these operators. Uh, here A uh, is the operator uh, with the matrix G of X. It does not depend on epsilon. Uh, but here we have tau divided by epsilon, here and here. Uh, the next step is the flake block theorem. Uh, the operator A um, has periodic coefficients, uh, and uh, so it uh, can be expanded in the direct integral uh, of operators A of k. A is unitarily equivalent to this direct integral. Uh, the corresponding unitary operator is the Gilpart transform. Uh, the parameter k is called the quasi-momentum. Uh, k belongs to omega tilde. Uh, the operator A of k acts uh, on omega in the space L2 omega Cn. It is given by this differential expression with periodic boundary conditions. Uh, and to approximate uh, these operators, uh, of A of K. Approximations must be uniform in quasi-momentum K. Uh, the main part of study is the study of this separated family A of K by means of the analytic perturbation theory. Uh, so A of K is an elliptic operator in a bounded domain in omega. Uh, it has discrete spectrum. We can see that A of zero as an unperturbed operator uh, and A of K for small k as a perturbed one. Uh, the kernel, gothic N, the kernel of the unperturbed operator. It's easily seen that uh, this kernel uh, consists of constants, functions. So it is n-dimensional. Uh, by P, we denote the orthogonal projection uh, onto the subspace of constants. Uh, so the point zero is n multiple eigenvalue in the spectrum of amplitude operator. multiplicity n. Here are other eigenvalues. Then uh, for small k, let the modulus of k be less or equal than some number p naught. Uh, the spectrum between the operator a of k uh, looks like this. On the interval zero delta, we have exactly n eigenvalues, lambda one of k, lambda n of k, uh, and um, the interval from delta to three delta is free of the spectrum. Here we have other eigenvalues. And we control uh, these uh, delta and the not explicitly. Uh, next. Uh, we need to, dis to distinguish the one dimensional parameter. Uh, we write K as T theta. T is the modulus of K, theta is the unit vector. And we will write A of T and theta instead of A of K. Uh, we study this operator family uh, by means of the analytic perturbation theory with respect to the one dimensional parameter T. But we have additional parameter theta. Um, by the Caporelli theorem, for small t, there exist uh, real analytic branches of the eigenvalues lambda l and eigenvectors phi l of our operator family. Uh, I mean that uh, they are analytic in t, but they depend also uh, on theta. Uh, and the set of phi L's uh, forms an orthonormal basis uh, in the eigenspace uh, of our operator uh, corresponding to this part of the spectrum. Uh, 
uh, for us, only this part of the spectrum is important, in fact. And we can uh, write down the power series expansions uh, for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The expansion for lambda L uh, starts with term of order T squared. Uh, we uh, also need the term of order T cubed and uh, T to the power four. Uh, and the coefficients gamma L are strictly positive. They are separated from zero. In fact, this follows from the ellipticity of our operator. Now we write down expansion for phi L. It starts with some embryo omega L. Uh, these embryos belong to the subspace of constants, to the kernel of amplitude operator. Uh, and the set of embryos, omega 1, omega n, uh, forms an orthonormal basis in the subspace of constants. Uh, now, uh, by f of t theta, we denote the spectral projection of our operator family. Uh, corresponding to the interval zero delta. Um, we have the following approximations. Uh, approximation for F um, is the principal term is P, um, projection onto constants. Um, next, we write the term of order T and the error term of order T squared. And approximation uh, for the operator A of T theta multiplied by this spectral projection. Uh, it starts with the term of order T squared. Here we have the coefficient S, which is very important for us. Uh, we need also the next term, uh, T cubed times K of theta, and the error is of order T to the power four. Uh, these operators F1, S, K, uh, can be described in the invariant terms, as well as in terms uh, of the coefficients of these power series expansions. Uh, this is representation for F1, and the most important, um, S of theta. Uh, S of theta uh, is the product uh, of three matrices. Here, G0 is the effective matrix, which was defined above, and B of theta is the symbol of the operator B of D. So we see that this S uh, is uh, the symbol of the effective operator. We call this operator S of theta the spectral germ of our operator family. Uh, it turns out that the coefficients gamma L and the embryos omega L are eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this spectral germ. And uh, finally, uh, we need some information about this coefficient K of theta. Uh, in fact, we do not need K itself, but uh, we need K multiplied by projection P from both sides. So it's the block of K in the subspace of constants we denote it by N of theta. Um, this is the invariant representation for N, but more important will be representation in terms of the coefficients. Uh, this N of theta can be written as the sum of two terms, N naught and N star. N naught uh, is diagonal in the basis of uh, omega L's. Uh, its uh, eigenvalues are mu L's coefficients at T cubed here. Uh, and um, the operator N star has uh, zero diagonal elements in this basis. Now we are ready to formulate the results. First, uh, we recall our result with Mikhail Slamonovich Birman. Uh, this cosine for A epsilon converges to the cosine of A naught. Um, in the operator norm from H2 to L2, and we have such estimate. Uh, similar result uh, for the second function for this one. 
was obtained by Yulia Mishkova. Here the norm is from H1 to L2. Now on new results, theorem three. Uh, we obtain approximation uh, with uh, character, not for this cosine itself, but uh, for this operator, this cosine multiplied by identity plus epsilon lambda epsilon d of d pi epsilon. Approximation is given by uh, the cosine of the effective operator and uh, their character. Uh, the norm is from H4 to L2. Then we have estimate of four the epsilon squared for fixed tau. Uh, but on the right, we have this factor, one plus modulus of tau squared, which grows at infinity for large time. Uh, here is description of the character, uh, not very simple. Uh, the character K is the sum of two terms. Uh, K1 is uh, the standard character, uh, but it includes the smooth and operator pi epsilon. Uh, and this is K2, uh, which is independent of epsilon. It depends only on tau. Uh, this G of D is a second order pseudo differential operator uh, with the following symbol. So this is our first new result. Uh, second result, uh, for this operator function, this sign multiplied by a epsilon to minus one half, uh, we obtain uh, approximation with character in the norm from H3 to L2 uh, with the same error estimate. For fixed tau, it's epsilon squared. Uh, the character is even more complicated than in theorem four. Uh, again, it consists uh, of uh, K1 tilde, uh, which is the standard character, uh, including the smoothing operator. And we have two more terms described here, which uh, depend only on tau. Uh, theorem five. Uh, this uh, is approximation uh, for this operator cosine multiplied by this operator in the energy norm from H3 to H1 uh, for fixed tau estimate of order epsilon, but we have this factor one plus modulus of tau on the right. Uh, K1 is uh, the first term of the previous character. Uh, note, uh, that, uh, of course, uh, our aim uh, was to um, obtain such approximation for this cosine itself. Uh, but um, it is impossible to obtain such approximation in the same terms, in terms of the spectral characteristics at the bottom of the spectrum. Uh, the problem is uh, to approximate this operator. The analysis uh, shows that uh, the problem to approximate this operator uh, can be reduced to approximation of this operator cosine for A of K multiplied by F of K orthogonal. F of K orthogonal uh, is the spectral projection for this part of the spectrum from three delta to infinity. So we cannot expect uh, uh, to approximate uh, this operator uh, in terms of the spectral characteristics at the bottom of the spectrum. This is the problem. Well, now we recall the result by Yulia Mishkova, approximation for this uh, operator uh, in the energy norm. Uh, and now we discuss improvement. Uh, under some additional assumptions, uh, all the results can be improved. Uh, this is additional assumption, condition one. Uh, suppose uh, that at least one of the following assumptions is satisfied. The first variant is that the theta n of theta is zero for any theta. The second variant, n naught is zero. Uh, it means uh, that all the coefficients mu L in um, 
power series expansion for lambda L are equal to zero. Uh, and here we also assume that um, the multiplicity of the spectrum of the spectral germ uh, does not depend on theta. This is the second variant. Uh, note that uh, for the acoustic separator, uh, if G of X uh, is the matrix with the real entries, it is important. Uh, it is known that uh, N of theta is zero, so this condition is satisfied. We also have other examples when this condition is satisfied. Uh, improvement, theorem seven, under this condition one, uh, the previous results uh, are improved. Uh, estimate 14 for cosine. Uh, in the general case, here uh, we have H2, now H3 half uh, for this separator. In the general case, it was H1, now uh, H1 half. <clears throat> Позже, позже, позже. Я на, на часы смотрела, позже начала. Значит, хорошо, хорошо. Also, we have improvement with respect to time. In the general case, it was one plus modulus of tau. Now, square root of this. Uh, well, also improvement on the one. Uh, the results with uh, characters are also improved in both senses. For example, for, for the first, uh, here was H4, now H3. Uh, on the right, it, it was uh, in the general case, it was one plus modulus of tau squared, now one plus modulus of tau. Improvement in both senses. Uh, the results uh, with uh, uh, character in the energy norm. Also, we have improvement under condition one uh, in both senses. Yeah? And a few words about the sharpness of the results. Roughly speaking, uh, in the general case, all the results are sharp uh, regarding the norm type and regarding the dependence of estimates on tau. More precisely, uh, theorem 10. Suppose that the operator M0 is not zero, at least for some point, theta not. Uh, it means that at least one coefficient mu L here is not zero, at least one. Uh, then all the general results the results of theorems one six are sharp in both senses uh, regarding the norm type and regarding the dependence on tau. Finally, we show that the improved results, uh, which uh, are valid under condition one, are also sharp. Theorem 11, the last one. Uh, suppose now that a knot is zero. So all the coefficients mu L are equal to zero for any theta. But suppose that at least one coefficient uh, nu J is not zero for some point theta naught. Uh, and it, it, this is usually satisfied. Uh, then the improved results, the results of theorems seven, nine are also sharp regarding the norm type and regarding the dependence of estimates on tau. So here you can see some references. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for your talk. Uh, uh, there are some questions. Uh, in the... So as I understand, uh, in theorem eight, H three is sharp. Yes. So so before you had uh, H four and now H three. H three is sharp. H three is sharp if condition one is satisfied, 
And if uh, at least one coefficient new L is not zero, it is usually satisfied mm -hmm. uh, that uh, new Ls are not zero. Then uh, it is sharp. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, let's then. Um, um, okay, let's send this Peter again.